I 100% agree and anecdotally because I've done it for so long. Yeah. Like I've, I've been the, that guy lurking in the background and if a ranch tag pops up and a landowner tag pops up and cheap and random units, I've hunted them. Mm-hmm. And there are big bucks in a lot of random places. Yeah. That's amazing. It makes antelope fun. Mm-hmm. I like hunting them in like that foothill stuff, like where that's, people aren't hunting them. Like that's when I had my Nevada antelope tag. Like I was chasing them in places where there wasn't a lot of people. So I knew I had a buck that... If I wanted to go after him, I knew I was the only person hunting mm-hmm. him because no one wanted to hunt that stuff. When you had that tag, did you just look like overlook everything that you would typically find antelope in and go look for an area where you thought there'd be antelope 100%, 100%. potentially, but just no other people? Mm-hmm. Did you see many antelope or not many? I didn't see many, no. So just just a few? Just a few, but I, like, like, I, I had enough target bucks picked out that I had all, all marked, so I knew like a strategy, like I'm going to go hunt here right away, check this out. If he's not there, I have another backup buck, but like I knew a lot of those bucks won't get pressured. Yeah. And I killed I killed mine 30 minutes in the opening day. Yeah. I mean, I did my homework ahead of time to, you know, pinpoint where it was exactly, but yeah. I had a plan going into it, but, you know, shot my target buck right away. I like when there's not a lot of them, just the mm-hmm. mind numbing, like, you know, you talk about some of those fourth season Colorado deer hunts and you just see a deer everywhere. metric pile of 150 mm-hmm. inch deer and it just gets like, you, sometimes you don't even want to take out your spotter because you kind of preemptively are already like, oh, I know what it is. Yeah. But maybe it's, maybe <laughs> yeah, it's not. Maybe not. That, the same thing with antelope, but even worse because there's more and it's in the heat and they're in the open and it's like you just get mind numb of like oh, another spot, another time, get out, spot yeah. the whole thing. I like when there's just pockets, few pockets of them and you can really get in tight and go look and mm-hmm. that's what I like. Is there a pretty animal? I don't think there's a prettier animal on the, on the western Absolutely landscape. Absolutely gorgeous. There's not. What about mule deer? Prettier? No? And antelope, well, the cape wise is pretty. Cape <laughs> Yeah. They're so striking. I think they're just beautiful animals. Yeah. I think they're really cool. I don't think anyone could argue <clears throat> if you're talking pretty. And yeah. stri- I mean, how do you argue? Orange, white, and black. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. How do you argue that? Those real black cheek patches. Yeah. And I love it when those older bucks, they get the real black muzzle. and yeah. The those. alien looking face yeah. and the heat waves when you glass them up and it just looks like yeah, an alien I like, head. I love their demeanor. You know yeah. how they they kind of look at you and, you know, they stand out there. They're super yeah. curious. They'll approach you. Little yeah. noise they make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like I like zoo. the kind of we- yeah wheeze at you. The, yeah, I think uh, if you striking <clears throat> beauty is antelope, right? Majestic, like uh, you know that kind of like majestic vibe is mule deer, and then just the beast is elk. You know what I mean? That's what's cool about them is just, <laughs> the just noisy giant. frat boy. You mean? But like I'm talking that like the visual. Okay, like you were talking visual. about the pretty, the most striking animal, mm-hmm. antelope. Yeah. And talk about like that majestic vibe, yeah. big mule deer standing on a snowy hillside, yep. and then just sure. the mega beast of a yeah bull elk. I mean, a sixty-inch main beam. That's pretty oh, yeah. wild. It's yeah, wild. I love it. We're we're talking about antelope, but we're this is going to be released mid-September, which we should be talking about elk. But we've we've been we've on an antelope bender, huh? Around yeah. the office. Well, yeah, Nevada. That's the beautiful thing about Nevada. Yeah. Is antelope, August twenty-second rifle. Yeah. So a That's lot right. of a lot of guys in the office, a lot of friends. So we just got off of helping uh, a, a friend of Porter's, um, great guy, just helped him. C- Scott is on one on an antelope mm-hmm. hunt right now. Cody helped his friend um, just kill one. So, yeah, we're heavy in antelope. You know what else is cool about the two antelope that we had? You guys helped a buddy, with a Porter's buddy. And then, you know, we had your friend, Cody's friend in here just barely now. We were looking at an antelope and, and got it in the freezer. But both of those guys are relatively new to hunting. Mm-hmm. Like very, 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 very brand new. And I think an antelope's a great species for new hunters. Oh, it'll bite you. You're yeah. In, you're in deep if you go on a good antelope hunt. Yeah. You'll it never get, let it get away. It gets in your blood, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's a great introductory animal to go after. You work on every single technique. Optics. Yep. Long range. Glassing. Strategy. Lots of strategy. How do you break that thousand yard buffer? How do you get that shot? And when you do get a shot, it's going to be long. Mm-hmm. Optics like crazy. Flat landscape. So you got to be real strategic on process of how to even on, sneak in. Even a bow hunt though. Like. But I was testing everything. If you can yeah. get within bow range of an antelope, like you know you can get in bow range of anything else. You know I've never killed one with a bow. Oh, really? Never. Never, ever. Never. You want to? Why? Like, for what? <laughs> I'm, I'm on an archery. I'm, I'm getting more mature in hunting. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, I've hunted a lot. I've been super fortunate to hunt since I was 12 in a lot of different species, a lot of different places. Got my son now and my wife, and I love taking them hunting. And I like that, that like, kill thing in me it's in there but for specific reasons now where before it was just like mm-hmm. in me you know what i mean like yep. i just couldn't stand not killing <laughs> now i just like i have these 
purpose there's like purposes in my head for mm -hmm. and what for whatever reason uh, archery is like kind of taken over i want to kill with a bow for the rest of my life i just want to kill with a bow and uh it bothers me that i've never killed an antelope with a bow i've only killed one with a rifle all, yeah, my, all my other animals have been archery yeah i've killed two with a rifle i think and how many with a bow i don't know probably five five or maybe five yeah i can't, I I can't remember i did it backwards your <laughs> bow yeah. is fun. Yeah, it is fun. Would you you do? Are you like married to one method or the other? Spot and stock or blind or no. doesn't matter to you? No, just draw back. Yeah, sight picture. Oh antelope. yeah, that's uh, I just want to do it. Oh, when when we going? When you <laughs> <laughs> when you going? This, I know uh, your bow shooting good. Oh, it's shooting great. Thank you, Trail. By the way, <laughs> really really appreciate that. It's nice when it works out. Oh man, that thing is flat shooting right now. Shot it again this morning. It is. Some bows are easier to tune than others. God dang, that thing shoots good. Let's talk about your bow prep. My bow prep. Yeah. Okay. Like you're, you know, we just shot. We did some chronograph work the other mm -hmm. day. Getting that dialed. Now you're getting your sight tape. 100% mm -hmm. dialed, and now you're going to go out. Do you and, know what uh, is both shooting feet per second? Guess. You guess. I'm shooting 448, 449 grain. 450-ish. Yeah. 43 grain arrow. Draw. I'm going to say it's about 282. Damn close. You're a, bo you're a bow guy. What is what 285. Is it? Oh, 285. Yep. Okay. 285. Yeah. Consistent, though. Like, wildly consistent. 285 um, is, the, like, right in the wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. You shooting? Uh, you shot broadheads? Yeah, Ma that's what I. I on, Montex. I only sh to chronograph and all. Why would I shoot? Sure. My whole thought mm -hmm. process. Why would I shoot a field tip through the chrono and validate and all that stuff with field tip? Like I just did myself no justice when I'm in the field hunting. Mm -hmm. So I did it all broadhead, everything. Cool. Um, yeah, G5 Montex. Flying good. Phenomenal. Which is the reason I said you know kind of that wheelhouse because I think like two eighty to two ninety that's kind of you right in the the wheelhouse for being able to tune pretty much any broadhead that you might ever want to shoot. Yeah, it's not a hot rod. Yeah, I mean you you're introducing potentially more issues, a little bit more tuning. Whereas you you get like two eighty to eighty five, you're like right in the wheelhouse. You can tune anything pretty much. Any yeah. any broadhead should fly well. And it's uh, that's proving to be the case. I'm not an archery guy like you, and yeah. it's yeah. I mean whatever I. Throw on that. Although I've only shot Montex literally since the year they came out. I'm only, I have a tattoo on my wrist of a Montex. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I only shoot, only yeah, shoot that broad, it's... since the day they came out. What else did you have for him? Oh, so now that he's got that dialed, though, you're saying now you can start working on your, your angled shots. You get everything yeah. programmed in your uh, loophole full draw. Yeah, so what I'm, what I'm stressed about, not not stressed, but what I want to get done before I leave is, you know, elk hunt, angle cut's really not a thing. It could be, can but be. It's, it can be, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, really not a thing. Last animal I missed was because of an angle cut. Did, uh, so that, is, <laughs> that, that has, elk, right? that has that been in elk. my head. It was an elk. That has been in my head. Yep. And But the my, like, driving force behind this is I, I did reschedule my sheep hunt. Outfitter got back to me in text. I'm on the book, so I'm going in October, I'm leaving September 30th, October 1st through the 10th. And stone sheep, I mean, clearly going to be an angle. If there's not an angle cut, it'll be a miracle. It's kind of where my mind's at. And so, yeah, I really, I really want to get the uh, loophole full draw five, which I just picked up. I'm going to make that my archery rangefinder for this hunt. I just, I want to make sure like I'm take all mind thought yeah everything out matches up yep. have you played with that the full draw five yeah what's your take on it you like it love it i everybody says that it's the most it's the best archer specific yeah. you know bow hunter specific range finder out there i don't have one i swore up and down i was gonna buy one after i missed that bull <laughs> <laughs> you're on your phone trying to buy it yeah like instantaneously yeah i mean when i missed that bull i was so pissed i was just, uh, I, it sucks and it's a bull too yeah like yeah, big, yeah you yeah, feel like bull, you know yeah. you just feel yeah. like i mean here's the thing is like i can't i don't feel terrible because when that arrow went off it broke as clean as any arrow i've ever shot in my life and like i was yep dead bull but i just just angle angle compensation steep downhill did you in your mind because the vital profile of a bull is so big did it not register or like what? oh i just i'd sat there all day in the sun waiting for this bull to stand up and kind of work his way back up this ridge which he did perfectly um, I stood up, I kind of worked my way into the shade of this juniper and I was just kind of watching him, tracking him and it developed over, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of him working along this ridge, stepped out, took a range, even though I'd been sitting there in the sun for three and a half hours, like I could have had that all figured out, which I'm sure at some point I'd probably ranged it, you know, and my, 
my rangefinder, you range, and then you have to wait like a split second, and, and it'll give you it'll give you the calculated. Yeah. So it gives you the true distance, and then it'll give you the calculated range after the fact. In the moment, for whatever reason, that that moment, I just lost it and just ranged. Took the first range, which was like 65 yards, dialed to 65. Waited for him to step out, drew back, anchored. And it was pretty steep downhill, and I don't know, I don't know what it was, but yeah, I just held it right over the top of his back, gave him a haircut. Mm. And but but when that arrow released, it was like one of those arrows when you shoot it and you just see the arrow. Immediately the in your head, you're like, "Yep, dead." Yep. Yep. See the arrow the entire flight. Just looks so perfect. Yeah, it's just yeah. arcing in. You can see those veins just twisting. Yeah. You know, you can see the whole thing, and you're like, "Yep, this is gonna happen," and then just sparks. <laughs> yeah. My mental, my mental voice. For whatever mm. reason, I'm sure everyone's different. But when I do execute a shot that I just in my head I hear myself go, Yep. Mm -hmm. Like that's yep. that's my mental cue on a good shot. Those are the best ones. Best. It's so I'm, I'm I'm interested in how you like that rangefinder because I know that you can input, you know, mm -hmm. your every, all the all the different specs of yep. your setup. So you're shooting it through a chrono? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And mm -hmm. then you, you all put you put that in and it's it's pretty accurate. People everybody I've talked to says it's pretty accurate, unless you get like stupid steep. So I have not real life validated. Mm. I have data in, but I have not real life validated, which I plan to do when the archery range opens back up. Gotcha. Hurricane Hillary put a little damper Ours on Ours too. Them. Up really? there. Yeah, washed out the whole road. Yeah, yeah it was yep. closed for a week. Yeah, so I, uh, um, once that gets open, I got some time. I'm going to go, you know, real world validate. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've, I love it otherwise. I mean, until yeah. unless something weird happens there, I love it. You got an 18, like an 18 and one Reinhardt. Those are kind of fun to just kick kick down a hill and shoot them. Shoot I some don't. angles. I probably should get one. Those are kind of handy. Yeah, those are kind of fun. What's what's your training stuff look like right now? Shoot practice wise? Every for getting day, ready for your yeah. Hunt? Yeah, it's funny. So I hunted, I told, I was telling you the other podcast, I hunted the first three days of the of the bow hunt, which, you know, I drew, I drop my bow back like first thing in the morning while I'm kind of waiting for it to get light. I, I'll knock an arrow and draw it back a few times and anchor and just aim it at a spot. And it's just to kind of get used to finding your anchor point and like feeling the tension and everything. But, um, came back and then this week uh i went up and shot some arrows the one morning before work and if it, it, it felt like i hadn't shot for a few days really? yeah i'm weird that way i know everybody's different there's a lot of people that think like oh i can't shoot i shoot too much you know and mm -hmm. they they you know they can introduce some bad habits that's, that's lorenzo me. yeah right that's me yeah i'm i'm kind of the opposite like if i don't shoot every day if i don't draw an anchor and find my anchor point and get comfortable with it it, it tends to f float for me it just feels weird to me mm. so i yeah i gotta shoot arrows but yeah mid midweek i had busted strands in my string so i had uh two strands that went around my peep site that i knew were broke and they've been broke i just kind of served them over um but then i got new strings shout out Austin, Austin Kincaid built me some strings <laughs> and, uh, they showed up at my house and like, I had this thought the one evening I was like, I shouldn't do this. Yeah, like, this <laughs> that, that's the hunt. I'm sitting yeah, there and I'm looking I at the, do this, I'm looking at I'm these gonna. strings and they're so pretty. Cause yeah. I mean, so I haven't had a, I haven't had like a pin stripe set of strings cause I kind of bought into this thing that like solid color solid strings yeah. or, you know, even two colors were a more stable, you know, set of strings because you're not introducing that third strand. And then after, and I got to thinking back on it, like one of the best sets of strings I ever had had a pin stripe in it. And then, you know, talking to Austin, Austin kind of convinced me he thinks it's bullshit. So he sent me, it's a, uh, man, they're the sexiest set of strings. They're uh, like tan uh, black pin stripe with flame. It's, which Ooh. is like an orange red flame color between and clear serving. They're just, they look so good. I don't think I've ever seen you so excited. And oh, like, I love a new set of strings. I'm a, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to strings. But yeah, I was sitting there, I got them in the mail. They were laying there and I was like looking at them and I was like, I shouldn't do this because the bow was shooting really good. Like, even though I knew it had some busted strands and I've had those on there for what year and a half, I guess, at this mm -hmm. point. And then I was just like, yeah, fuck it. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going for it. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I ran downstairs and threw them on and, you know, every set of strings is like, it, there's a little bit of a shoot in period, you know, there's some tweaks. I went up the next morning and shot strings, shot my pins in. It shot okay, but I was just like not in love with the way it shot. So then I came home, uh, at lunch, threw the bow in the press, I put a half twist in the one lamp or one cable, um, you know, cut the D loop, cut the knock point, pulled the peep out. Oh, dang. You did everything. Yeah. Yeah. I get weird. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, pulled everything out and then kind of restarted over, set things up, shot it through paper, bullet hold, um, shot a bear shaft through paper, bullet hold. And then, yeah, I ran it up to the range um, that evening and I shot broadheads out to 100 yards and 
That's what I was telling you in the other podcast. So I like to shoot pop cans at 100 yards. I, you know, stick them in a target because I like that audible pop, you know. It's just like ping. I love that sound. So I shot broadheads into 100. And it's aiming and shooting really good. But Coke or Pepsi? Uh, it was a, it was a, what was it? No, it wasn't Mountain Dew. It wasn't my pop can. I just pulled it out of the trash can. It was like a iced tea, white can on a black, on a tan target, you know, so Ooh. it sh- showed really well. I'm taking out Bud Lights. Bud, Shooting yeah, all Bud's. the Bud Light cans. Yeah, lights. No, you, you, you were talking about that. I'm like, that is, I would enjoy that audible it, oh, feedback. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the best, man. Yeah. You cut an arrow loose and you kind of watch it and fly, but then you get that audible feedback, yeah. that ping. And I'll have fun shooting Bud Light cans. It'll yep. be great. Yep. You're like, yep. Me and, me and Kid Rock. That one, that <laughs> He's one doing it with a machine gun though, so yeah. it's a little different. So that's good though. Went in, tied the, tied the peep in and that's, but yeah, I'm shooting. If I'm, if I'm at work, like I'm at home working during the week and then, you know, if I'm hunting on weekends, I'm, I'm up shooting every day. Just every to, day. Yeah. Every morning. Mostly it's just because I like to shoot. Oh. How many, uh, what are you doing, like 30, 45 minutes of shooting? Or is it oh, just... I'm getting up there probably like, uh, I'll get up and like make my kids lunch, make them breakfast. They leave for school at like 7.30. So I'm like taking off maybe 15 minutes before they head out the door. And I'm up there from like 7.30 to 8.30. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting a good yeah like an time. hour. I'm probably shooting 50, 60 arrows. Yeah. 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 So I've been, because I, I can introduce some, like I just know that about myself, mm-hmm. but I'm also, this is the most, you know, I don't know what the word is, stressed, anxious, whatever, but you know, stone cheap bow, it's, oh, it's in my mind a little, you know, how is the pressure? It, it's, do you, in, do you feel it? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. It's, this is, it's on my mind. And usually I'm, I'm a, you guys know me, I'm a pretty carefree, like, yeah. you know, easy going. Mm-hmm. This one's, it's on me. Like it'll eat at me a little bit, just making I, sure, you know, yeah. am I really doing enough? Am I really yep. doing everything I can? Kind of a thought. Um, so what I've been doing and what I did today, which I really enjoyed. So I've been rucking cause I can do that, you know, can't lift, but I can do that. And when I get back to the truck, I have a block target. Um, there's real no angles cause the, I can't drive my truck like into the mountain mm-hmm. cause it, the, the trailhead stops and I got to hike in the desert. So I can't, I don't really have angles, but what I did today was I kicked the target out and I just started walking through the desert and wherever I stopped was the shot. So I wasn't doing a perfect 20, 30, were you, 40. Were you guessing your range and then ranging it? I w- and mentally I was guessing, but then I would range. range. Mm-hmm. But wherever I stopped, if it was 43 or if it was 47, that's where I shot from. Yep. And it was it was nice today because I just, you know, I've been doing really good at all the increments of 10, but like yeah. it's just a dead hold and really nothing else to think about. And those first couple like... 47 and a half and 46 mm-hmm. and 35. And I'm like, okay, splitting pins, doing this. The first couple of shots weren't great. But then after I shot about 20 arrows, I'm like, all right, I'm good. Yeah. You know, but if I hadn't done that, mm-hmm. and that it's because that sheep thing is just a yeah. little more than, yeah, a little more than usual. It's just kind of like, am I really doing enough? I don't think enough people spend time estimating range. And, and it's like, a good I, trait to have. Yeah. Too. I, I have a friend you guys, you guys know this person as well, but um, I won't out him on the podcast. Come on, he's he, your friend. He won't get mad. It's Rich. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Rich. Yeah, Rich. Rich missed a cow mm. on the weekend. Oh, he did. Did, did he tell you guys this? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. So he missed a cow, and he was asking me. He's like, uh, "How often do you, when you're elk hunting, do you actually range the animal before you get a shot?" And I was thinking about it, and I'm like. I can't think of hardly any instances where I've actually got a chance to range the animal and, and then the same spot. and then shot that animal for the same range. Yeah. Like I may have ranged the animal as it's walking in, but more more often you're ranging a tree, a bush, some place, you know, and, and, and several options, right? So you're measuring some some close, some some far, and you're kind of using that as a you know a guesstimate mm-hmm. to kind of judge. But he was asking me that, and I, as I got to thinking about it, I'm like, I don't, I don't think I spend nearly enough time just guesstimating range. Hmm. The, that cow that came in on the weekend, I mean, I ranged her at one point; she was 90 yards. She ended up, you know, at 42 yards. Um, I didn't range her in between there, you know what I mean? But like, she was pretty much in the wide open, you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. I, if I would have decided to kill that animal, I would have had to guess, other than you know, pull out my rangefinder and risk spooking her. So man, guess guessing ranges is important. It it's is. really and important. It's a, you, That's you, why I asked if you were guessing. As, I, I as always, well as I always do before in that, yeah. like in that exercise, um, of, of like doing that style of shooting. But I always try and guess, and I always out there like hunting antelope. I'm always trying to guess mm-hmm. before I range. 
I was like, oh, I think he's like 600. And then I'll range yeah. it and see, yeah. you know, or like, how close are we to those antelope? The ones that were just sitting in the field, like to our left, and kind of driving up this road and they were in a ag field. And obviously if you're on one side and they're in the ag field, like they don't really care. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, is that an archery shot? I'm like, I think they're 90. And I did range them and they were 101. And I'm like, yeah. what a miss, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I was, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things like you can get better at it too if you just keep doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. And the different sizes of animals impact how close or how far they look. Yeah. You know, like an elk, the body size of an elk is, you know, double that of a mule deer. So yeah. It's bull gonna, elk it's at gonna, 20 yeah. is like... This fucking thing is on me. Yeah. <laughs> like, we have yeah. no space in between yeah. us. Yeah. And, and conversely, yeah. you see it at 16, you might think it's at 50 or 40, yeah, you know, exactly. just because of the body size. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, Trail, when you're out there right now, mid season, mm -hmm. doing your archery practice, what are you doing distance wise? You know, your bow's tuned. Everything's yeah. di let's say everything's dialed. Are you doing long distance practice to make the easier shots better and like make sure all the stuff's perfect? Yep. Or are you just mixing it up and doing any sort of yardage and going through and like shooting a course or? I've been on a long range kick lately. Like I would say, so if I shoot 60 arrows at the range in the morning, I would bet 40 of them are from a hundred to 120. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just launching bombs <laughs> and I think it's just, it's because, and then I'll shoot, you know, I'll shoot the various ranges just to jump, double check my marks and my pins. But, and it does, I, I mean, I, I don't know that it makes it a whole lot easier, but once you've shot a bunch of arrows at 110, 120, you move into 50 or 60, it looks pretty steady yeah. like your pin hold looks real steady and your form feels really tight just because mm -hmm. you have to be so set so solid 120 to hit anything so i think it, it does help but i don't i mean that's not like uh i didn't calculate it that way it's not like i've been like oh you know in august and september you know leading up to a hunt i'm only going to shoot 100 or 120 just to tighten things up it's just because that's what i've been doing because it's fun it's fun too yeah. yeah the one thing i do like about shooting long distance uh especially if you're like working out your sight uh so like your left and rights um you know assuming that your bow is tuned you've paper tuned it maybe you've done a walk back tune but you start shooting at 110 120 you can really walk your left to right into dead center same with your vertical as well, but mm -hmm. you're, I really like to use long range to work out my left and rights yep. on my pin. Cause the further away it is, the more exaggerated it's going to be. Yeah. You've been shooting long. I saw you the other day, you're shooting 75, 80. Yeah. I mean, is that considered long? I think it's long. 80 is long is shot, long? man. Yeah, that's it's, a, it is funny. I will say like, I've been listening to like a bunch of different podcasts and reading a bunch of different posts in the last like week and a half since the hunts have started. How many people I've seen now that are owning up to like shooting animals at 70 and 80 it's almost become like the six the new 60 80 is the new 60 yeah um, i mean i should i'll tell people all day long i've shot 80 before sure. even before if, if that is what's what you've noticed yeah i did it before that and i was i was successful at it were but. you hearing people talk say that 10 years ago I would post yardages back in the day. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking like right when social was around. Oh, I got ripped apart hard yeah. for telling distance I was shooting things at. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe because it didn't have a way to prove how much you were practicing. People just assumed you were just maybe going out there and just, oh, I'm going to launch a bomb at 90. <laughs> but like, and I think the equipment's gotten a lot better. Equipment's gotten a lot yeah. better. Like yeah. you're saying though, when I was shooting, you know, when I was a diehard bow hunter, like that's why I wanted to hear what you were doing. Cause like when I would go out in the summer, it was just hundred plus. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. Cause I wanted to work on everything, the form, shot execution, yep. you know, control, like you're saying the lefts and rights, you can really see it because everything's going to be magnified at that distance. So I can fine tune it to be perfect. And then when I go back closer distances, my gosh, it just feels so easy. Yeah. And watching a clean arrow break at a hundred just gives you more time to watch. Just oh, you're going to have the best day at work ever. If you just, launched one at a hundred and, and hit just, a pop can, yeah. and you watched it, it just gives you more time to yeah. watch it go in. Yeah. So satisfying. Nothing yeah. It is, like it is a trend though. Like more people are yeah. okay with it. I just think, I think more people are just getting more confident to own up to it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you do practice, you should be. Why not? Yeah. Like increasing your effective range is increasing success. So like yeah. people who really genuinely work at it, go do it. I can mm -hmm. definitely say like in the last mm, five years or so, I mean, if you go to a attack event, right? So if you went to attack event five years ago or 10 years ago, most people that were there were shooting index finger, you know, wrist rocket releases. You hardly ever saw, you didn't see that many people with like a back bar. Yeah. You didn't hardly ever see anybody with a dovetail side or slider. If you go to that event now, I would say 80% of the people are shooting either a thumb button release or a hinge. There's, and you know, not that you can't shoot an index finger release really cleanly and really accurately because you certainly can. There's a lot of people that do it, but Cam you, Haynes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's yeah, Tim crazy Gillingham. accurate. Tim, Tim Gillingham, I mean, 
you know, the hammer. But he, um, but a lot of people are now, you know, back bars, super common, you know, slider sites. Everybody's got one. I would bet 90% of the sites we sell on our gear shop are slider sites. Yeah. So back, just, back bars are so common that mm-hmm. I saw when Lorenzo was shooting through the chronograph the other day, I was like, you don't have a back bar? Yeah. yeah. Like he doesn't have one. It's kind yeah. of anomaly now. We're back in the day. Like you said, it was the total opposite. I just, I, when I first tried the back bar, so I, I, what I like to do when I first draw, when I first draw, I don't put my head in first. I always first draw and kind of get a, I have it close, but like kind of down a little bit towards my leg, my front leg. And I always like to get a, a visual sight picture of mm-hmm. shooting lanes and just kind of recheck everything before I settle in. Cause as soon as you settle in, or at least me, I'm, you know, as soon as I settle in my field of view, I get real, uh, like singular focused once my eyes in that peep mm-hmm. and you just kind of lose. Like if you walk through one shoot lane, because I took that moment, I know there's another one coming, but if I would have been in my peep the whole time, I might not have yeah. known that. Right. If Follow you didn't along stop, with it. right. So I always kind of let it hang low and that back bar would hit my leg mm. and it, I don't just my stance or yeah. whatever. And it was, it was bugging me. So I just, I pulled it off. That's one thing I like about mine is I like that V in the back bar and the riser. I like rest it between my thigh before I draw. It's like another little reminder. It's just part of my shot process. I set yeah. it right there and I let that V bar sit on the either side of my thigh with the riser. But Different um, strokes, different folks. Different that it, bugged man. me. That it yeah. would touch me. Yeah. It just bugged <laughs> yeah. me. Lorenzo was like, don't touch me. Yeah, I'm like, I just wanted to I just wanted to let it hang and hold. Like I don't want anything. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't do it. Did you just touch my drum set? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you know the the shooting eighty for me is because I have a feeling, you mm-hmm. know, she I have sure. a feeling it's gonna be so, it could, a could weird eighty three or seventy four type of just mm-hmm. a weird number, you know? The other thing about archery right now is there's never been more like good how to's you've got podcasts. You have a lot of really good shooters that are putting out information on YouTube. Mm-hmm. There's like tons of good information. I mean, the ability to go from just like a novice shooter or a brand new shooter to somebody, I saw a guy, a guy followed me on Instagram and then he sent me a message. So I clicked on his profile. I was just kind of cruising through and looking through his profile. The guy's shooting 300 Vegas rounds, right? with a hunting bow, long bars, but he's only been shooting a bow for a year and a half and he's consistently doing that. I think I've probably only ever shot like one or two, 300 rounds in my life. Like that guy just started a year and a half ago yeah. and was able to go from that point to like regularly shooting 300 That's Vegas awesome. rounds just by what he picked up, you know, online or, or whatever. So yeah, more people are willing to share nowadays. For it sure. Like, like back in the day, it was just like archery talk. Yeah. And you know oh, what yeah. happens on archery talk? It's just a lot of opinions and like no one's really helping yeah. each other. No, there's always like on a form. Yeah. And you no. had to fish through all this stuff. Yeah. yeah there's all like, this bunch of junk. Like who's yeah. actually a legit person? You don't know. And then nowadays, like you legit have people who are, have the background mm-hmm. and to back it up, like we're talking something, you can listen to that person. You can gain a lot of intel. You can cut that learning curve down so much faster. Yeah. If you ever, if you want to really geek out on archery stuff right now, John Dudley's got a whole series going on in his podcast, the knock on podcast. And he's had like Joel Maxfield, you mm, know, at Matthews. Yeah. He had Bill at uh, Iron Will. He had Darren Cooper, which was the oh, cam yeah. and a half designer for OG. Hoyt. Um, like he's had like three or four people just recently. I listened to him going back and forth between the mountain, but like those guys go so deep into just all, all kinds of tech tuning arrow tips. Most of it's heavily on arrow stuff, but if you mm-hmm. want to check that out, it's, it's interesting, but that kind of stuff didn't exist. Yeah, you, the internet was still very popular back then, but yeah. it's just like not many people were willing to share the trade secrets. Yeah. Just weren't, do, weren't doing it. Can yeah. I tell a long story? Yeah. And I love it's about long a stories. rifle, but I'll, <laughs> it's this exact thing, exact thing, but about a rifle and Brady doesn't, you know, um, I'll validate Brady for him because he takes he doesn't give himself enough credit for it sometimes. But so we we were just antelope hunting, helping one of Porter's really good friends. He's become one of my friends through Porter. New to hunting, um, very capable guy named Zach Harpin. Snowmobiler works on snowmobiles. You know, construction build kind of a guy, like mm-hmm. very capable. Um, but he he loves genuinely outside of Porter. Loves to go hunt. He's been an insider for a long time because he wants to get into hunting. Mm-hmm. He wants to get his kids into hunting and all this stuff. So this is who we went up antelope hunting with. Um, and, you know, he Porter wanted us to go, and we needed to get some assets for some other things too, mm-hmm. some of our new apparel hats and things. So perfect, you know. Yeah. It's two birds, one stone. I need to get the fuck out of the city anyways. <laughs> I feel stuck here after all this shit, so let's go. So we go out there, and uh, we're hunting antelope. The guy, his scouting report, because he went up the weekend before with his son, was so dialed. And this guy's new to hunting, right? Yeah. 
he killed a spike elk last year. This is, you know, and it was just a spike tag. So like, this is his first chance at a good animal, mm -hmm. you know, good antelope tag, the whole thing. Dude, his scouting report was phenomenal. Pins with pictures. With pictures, with, that was a cool part. Yeah, with description. Mm -hmm. Put it into a hunt folder, <laughs> sent it to us. And like, dude, he knows he knows the full suite of the product and how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. And he's and he's new to hunting, but he just took the time to read Brady's articles. Yeah. And to read our how and to watch our how-to videos and all this stuff, right? So Brady and I are him and I are in a truck driving up because we had to go get assets and we were kind of the asset team. So we got up there an hour and 40 minutes before them. Um, but man, we opened up the hump folder and Brady and I are like, shit, this is great. It's like we're, we're hitting the ground running. Yeah. Like we're, we'll go hit these spots. So when he shows up, we know he, yep. he, we can relay the message. This is phenomenal. It's like something we would expect from a guy like you, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, help no, me you out. You would expect that from Actually, me. Actually. Yeah. That's Max. <laughs> yeah. Not from you. Hold on. I'd be so, like, why don't you guys just fan out? Yeah. Let's see what happens. I, I take, you're right. I take that back. This just has something find to do with some it. stuff that looks good <laughs> and go for this, it. This would be like, uh, I don't know. This porter. would be like, yeah, he's a planner, right? And he, <laughs> yeah, and he planner. works here. And so he sure. knows our product. So yeah, it's like a porter thing, but man, he was just dialed. So Brady and I are like, shit, this is great. We're wasting no time. Mm -hmm. like, we'll just, we'll hit the ground running. So we do that. He shows up. We start looking and he's like, man, this last weekend of scouting, Brady and I are in my truck talking. And it's like, it is so fun. And you want to help a guy like him so much more because mm -hmm. he's putting it's in on the work. Yep. So that's where that sharing now, it now you really want to share with this guy, yep. all this stuff. Well, make a long story short. We find the buck that he had found last week that he sent us a pin and the pictures and amazing scouting report. We, we end up Brady glasses him up and we're like, Oh, that might be him. So we go over to, even he was like, yeah, that's him. Look at my picture. And he's already <laughs> verifying. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, this guy's, this guy's good. So develop a plan, this whole thing. Long story short, we will get this buck killed. Well, actually, we get on this buck. He pulls out a Kestrel, pulls out range, do, doing all this stuff. Does He has Brady standing right next to him. We got this buck at a at a maybe distance. We'll call maybe it. distance. It's like a maybe distance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's just verify if this is, he knew his effective range. Got the distance. It's like, not, not right now. There's a little bit of a crosswind. Not asking Brady any questions, nothing. Did it all himself. Yeah. Range, Kestrel, a little bit of a cross when he's like, no, no, I can't do it. Let's get closer. It was a maybe range. It was six something, right? But yeah. the guy had been practicing sure. a lot. But the cool, the cool thing about the Kestrel, though, he knew to spin the Kestrel in the air to clear out all the atmospheric conditions so it's going to get you the best dope. Yeah, I didn't know that. Best wind, best weather station. He was sitting there spinning there. And that's like an advanced tactic. Like a lot of people don't know, like, you know, spinning around. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there cleared. Going, get the sensor cleared. Doing? Yeah. <laughs> What, yeah. what was he Plain doing this for? Getting on the gun. Yeah. You know, like that's in my mind. He's, he's, really the take, he's really taking the string and you're spinning around a very expensive device in the air. It doesn't look like it should be doing it, but that's actually you're clearing out the sensor. He's like a kid in church. He's just yeah. whipping yeah. it around. Like, that, that tells you the difference of Brady. I'm sitting there going like, what the, what the yeah, hell is he doing? Because I'm thinking he's a new hunter. Brady's mm -hmm. over there going, holy shit, he knows what he's doing, right? Mm -hmm. So anyways, that was a maybe distance. We develop a new plan. We, we go in and now Brady is, uh, Brady went to a higher elevation so we didn't lose sight of the buck. He was all by himself. And he was acting like, and I'm willing to bet a lot of money, he had been shot at that morning. Because right. we didn't get to hunting grounds till 10.05. No. Yeah. I'm willing to bet he was shot at that morning. He was he all switched, by himself. switched on. And he was, I mean, he was alert every way from Sunday. Like mm -hmm. He was looking 360 at all points. So he was pretty tough to get on. Um, but we got on him. Brady was in charge of not losing sight. And then I went with Zach and his friend Scott, who was who was there just to to be there and help. He's a phenomenal guy, Air Force pilot, great guy. Good dude. Phenomenal. He he was with us yeah. on Porter's hunt last year. Just very a nice salt guy. to the earth, best guy. So me the, me and them two are are going down to you know put a stock on, try to get in the right area where he's going to. But Zach, because he went scouting the weekend before this this piece off these fields he knew like okay that's probably where he's going that's where i saw him last week so mm -hmm. we had that intel he had done that zach or sorry porter and brady are up top not losing uh visual on him mm -hmm. well, we get down there and it, it ends up working out we do a good job of getting in front of him and kind of predicting what's going to happen but it's not a close range we get the range for him it's 454 i think right 454 yep. Yep. he did not say one more word 
after that. And I don't have Brady with me. And yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a good, yeah. like, don't, don't I, you can't ask me those questions. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know I can, I'm confident in like telling somebody what to do to get on an animal or like potential behavior of what the animal is going to do based stock. on, yeah. yeah, like I'm confident mm-hmm. there. But man, if after I gave him the range, if he were to start asking me questions of wind, I would have had no clue, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, shit, Brady's not here and the shot's going to happen. Like I w- we were hoping we'd all get together mm-hmm. for the shot. But it was, it just kind of materialized. Gave him the range, 454. He never said a one word after that. Earplugs in, foamies in. And I'm like, man, it's still a pretty long shot. But like he was up there, did his whole thing. Next thing I know, bam, gun goes off get him acquired in my binos he's doing a spin mm-hmm. put him punched him right through the chest into the shoulder doing a spin tips right over and i'm like bro that was an amazing shot porter and brady come over and i'm like dude this guy the shot first thing he says he goes the only reason i did this and he was being dead serious he goes brady's videos like i learned how to shoot through brady's videos just like you start to finish start to finish and he's like kind of fanboy and sorry to throw you under the bus, Zach, but he was <laughs> fanboy. Now, now, you know, it's over and he, some truth was flowing and yeah. he was fanboying on Brady. But like that's to that level of people are willing to share, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm, I'm with a guy, he just started hunting last year. He's killed one animal, spike elk. Yeah. Right? And he killed it at 200 and something yards, kind of ran right to him, one of those deals. But I'm sitting there like, dude, he didn't ask any questions. Did it all himself. Had it figured. All he needed was a range. Was confident in his effective range. Knew the six something was no good. Four fifty four. He was super comfortable. That's the good thing about the internet right now, right? Yeah. And so he. So I'm like, Brady. Like, dude, you'd be so proud of him. Tell him about the shot. And he goes, The yeah. only reason I I know how to do this is I watch every single one of Brady's videos. Every single one. And one, one of the really cool things That's was too wild. is like every time he would grab his rifle, he would also grab his rear shooting bag. He yeah. had a Phoenix shooting bag, and he knew the importance as a new hunter, even though like to have support on the back side of the rifle when you're taking a shot. Like once you get past like 350, you're going to need some support on the back of your mm-hmm. rifle to keep it steady. He knew to carry that with him all the time. He had it in his hand. When he got up in the position to take a shot, you know, he had that bag right there. When I walked over, that bag was still underneath the rifle. Yeah. Like that was super cool. He realized that even though it's heat of the moment, he still has to do all the fundamentals, right? To make a stable shooting platform to make a perfect shot. He had and a he process. He yep. clearly had his process. Yeah, like the learning curve has been so shortened, hasn't it? Crazy. Yeah, Think was, about that. Yeah, 454 I, crosswind, yeah. not one question, nothing. Yeah, had everything figured. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, 20 years ago, you, you, I mean, you might have known some good archers or some good rifle shooters, yeah. you know, but now you essentially have access to them whenever you want. I mean, yeah. you can DM them, you can watch their content, you can watch YouTube. I mean, a lot of them put out really good content as, you know, techniques, the way to hold the release, the way to press, press a trigger. Yeah. <laughs> good work, Trill. I mean, good. You know, how to, I'm a fan of punch the trigger. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Even setting up like your own rifle, setting up your own bow. I mm-hmm. mean, we've done tutorials. I mean, you could, we've seen how to you know lath your scope rings right did i say yeah. that right lap 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 yep. lap Lapping. your scope rings yeah i mean that's incredible it's crazy that it you is. can do that and that's it's, it's pretty neat dudley doing what he's doing like dude, mm-hmm. it, it's crazy how much info is out there yeah yeah i mean i can fix my dishwasher i can put in a new uh dishwasher disposal i mean YouTube, shit. one youtube video one youtube video. <laughs> ready to go yeah. i wanted to go back to p- pressure yeah i was curious like i had uh So I was talking to Neville, we have a new hunt film coming out, which is my elk hunt last year in Utah. And we were doing some, you know, some voice and he was asking me some questions about that hunt. And one of the things he asked me was like, you know, you drew this tag, you burned your bonus points on it. You know, what, what what kind of pressure did you feel? And it got me thinking about it. And I was curious as to you guys' thoughts on pressure. So like, you've got a stone sheep tag. Yeah. Do you feel it differently than you did when you were younger? Like you've been you've been stone sheep hunting once, two thousand thirteen, a long right, time ago. Right, long time ago. I mean, do, does it feel different going into this, or do you still feel a lot of pressure? Like, and how does that impact your hunt? So, just to be ultra transparent, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, look, there's no uh, yes. I'm going on a stone stone sheep hunt, and there's no doubt everyone knows they are expensive, and they mm-hmm. are wildly expensive, and they're only getting more. Right. Sure. So I'm, you know, sitting here like, okay, I, I'm unreal fortunate. Like I can't even believe I'm going stone cheap hunting in 2023 to begin with, mm-hmm. with prices and all this stuff. So I'm already sitting here going, this opportunity is, this is not real. You know what I mean? Like this is not normal. And then you tack on to, but I really want to do it with a bow and my selfish for wanting to do it with a bow. 
Am I? I don't, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I have been fortunate to kill one with a gun in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I have goals. I want to accomplish certain things. And this is something I really want to accomplish is killing sheep with a bow. Yeah. If I can kill a slam with a bow, like that's just something to me. I will be very proud of myself mm -hmm. for doing that. You know, you can't, you can't fake your way into a bow slam, right? Yeah. You can't, you just can't do it. You, you got to kill it. You got to kill a sheep with a bow. Does it anyhow impede like your, your ability to enjoy this experience? So it's, that's a great question. It, in, a, in the moment here, while I'm thinking through it, the enjoyment of the stock itself, just because of the stress involved. Yeah, it probably will. But the beautiful thing about those hunts up North mm -hmm. is they're just such an enjoyable experience all the yeah, way through the environment, it's, it's, the animal. It's different. Yeah. Right? It's just the experience. Yeah. So the enjoyment will still be there yeah. and I am willing and I've already committed to myself is empty is, you know, I'll just be the idiot that, and I'm comfortable with that. I'll be the idiot that went on a stone chip hunt and came home empty because I wanted to selfishly kill it with a bow. I've made, <laughs> I'm good with You've that. You've made peace with it. I've made peace with that. People are going to say what they want to say and mm -hmm. I made peace with it. But the pressure, yeah, because am I am I going to go on another one? You know, they're only yeah. getting more expensive. I got another kid on the way. By the time he's old enough that I can go on another backcountry hunt, how, you know, what do they get to in five years, eight years? Do I ever get priced out of this stuff, mm -hmm. right? So you have these thoughts. It's like, yeah, pressure is it's real. Yeah. The only thing I can compare it to is when I drew my archery elk hunt in Nevada in 2000. I think that was what year did I draw that tag 2000 I don't know I took Scott mm -hmm. with me but I drew that with 14 points and in Nevada you're in a 10-year lockout if you kill 18 2018 and in Nevada you're in a 10-year lockout yeah. same with I, Utah over five years I'm I can't even apply for five more years and I start you start adding the math you're doing the math and you're like yeah. okay I can't apply for 10 it'd probably take me another 20 years at that point to draw if you're you and I had a lot of pressure because I knew the unit really well too I yeah. had spent a lot of time in the years previous to that hunting with some other people who mm -hmm. knew the unit really well and so like I I had big bulls on my mind and I had a lot of pressure going into that hunt so weird, I, this weird, feels weird feeling, huh? It reminds me of that. It yeah. reminds me of that. Brady, do you have an elk tag this year? You feeling? Do you guys feel? Do you feel pressure? Yeah. So I was gonna say, like, to me, having a tag that you know would impose some pressure on you, it makes me, it drives me further than I ever would on a normal hunt, and I think it then benefits all my other hunts after that. Like, mm -hmm. it makes all my preparation, you know, the work going into it, rise to a whole nother level. It's like playing in a championship basketball game or whatever, like you can get the best out of someone knowing you're going into that, like all that work is pays off. So like example, I'll give quick, but like I do feel, you know, a lot of pressure going into this elk tag because mm -hmm. I've earned a lot of points on it. It's a lot of years off my life. And so there's a pressure going into it. Like, like Renzo said, I'll, I'm locked out from applying for points or picking up another tag for a long time. So I won't actually get a tag of this quality for, a, you know, until I'm, Maybe in my 50s, maybe in my 60s. Maybe. 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 Yeah. maybe. And as good as elk are now, and I'm not trying to add pressure here, but as good as they are now, is it ever going to be this good? Yeah. Even know. if you do draw the tag again. I mean, this yeah. is like, this yeah. is kind of prime time of elk as far, I mean, mm -hmm. when you look at the history. Yeah. But then like the other example though, like last year, you know, I went on a Marco Polo hunt. Now we're talking about sheep, but that's a lot of pressure going on a Marco Polo hunt. Yeah. It's the, it's the cream of the crop when it comes to, you know, pinnacle of sheep hunting, in my opinion. It's a, a true, like a once, it's, it's a once, once a lifetime. lifetime. Yeah, really, yeah, <laughs> so like knowing I had that tag in my hand, mm -hmm. finally, knowing I'm going to go on it, the whole preparation leading up to it was just a whole, it was a, it was a whole nother level. It was like I was preparing for the biggest moment of my life, which it was. Yeah. And so because I did all those little steps beforehand, like I'm already, you know, I work out all the time. I reload, shoot my rifle, like do everything I can to be, put myself in the best position to be successful but because I had such a primo opportunity to do something I've always wanted to do in my life. Mm -hmm. I took it to another level. And because of that, I was shooting the best I've ever had been. My rifle was system was dialed. My, you know, all optics, gear, everything was perfected. My body was perfected. So when I went over there, when I got in that position to, I'm like, well, now I'm in the spot where I'm going to kill this ram. This is the ram we're going to kill. I was the most confident I've ever been in my life. And it was a very difficult shot normally because of the wind, you know, negative 15 degree temperatures. It's literally a Marco Polo. Like I, if I make this bad shot, I'll probably never get an opportunity again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's blood and done. Yeah. And Just the, the pressure left up to like leading up to it. 
just the thought of the sight picture of a Marco in my scopes gives me a little tingle in my plums. <laughs> yeah, you, like, a you don't tingle in my plums just thinking about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, every every animal's life is, uh, you know, valuable. But yeah. it's like I don't want to like make it seem like on on another animal like I'm not as focused and dialed or whatever. But like you're going to do something that you're never going to do again. Yeah. Like literally, I'll never do that again. Yeah. So like knowing that I was so calm, so collected. I'm like, yeah, that's a game changer shot. It's 409 yards. Like I can make that shot all day, mm-hmm. but those conditions are crazy. The elevation is crazy. It was just sub 16,000 feet elevation, you know, 20 plus 25 plus mile an hour wind. And I couldn't have put the bullet any more perfect. Yeah. I still have never released that footage of that. Um, the Ram only went like 60 yards and died, but like literally I couldn't have walked up and put a bullet in, in that a better mm-hmm. spot. But like that pressure moment though is what I crave. Like if I, I don't ever want to lose that excitement you get when you're in there, but like, Pressure's a good thing. It makes everything else rise to the top. Yeah, that's like, the same thought I had when, I, when he asked the question, did I feel pressure? And I'm like, yeah, I did feel pressure. You put a pressure you put pressure because you just know those opportunities aren't going to come around that often. It just made me think like how much, you know, like I have general season tags this year. Like, why don't I put that same emphasis? Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. And, and what, what, what could potentially happen if I did? Mm-hmm. Like if I looked at it the same way and again, I don't know if you can, because you know yeah. you, you kind of know in the back of your head that only you know one's going to come around every so often. The other one's much more regular. But yeah, it just made me wonder. Like, it made me wonder two things. One, I just I don't ever want to feel, and I think the older I've gotten, the easier it's gotten. Like, I I don't feel the pressure. Like, I had an elk tag in Utah in twenty ten, maybe or nine, something like that. I felt a lot of pressure then for some reason, like I was really amped up. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, this last year I, I felt like I was able to enjoy the experience more, to be honest. Like I felt like it was a, just a much more enjoyable hunt. Cause I didn't feel as much pressure, but I, just like you, the, the level of preparation, the level of scouting I put into it was tenfold, mm-hmm. you know, and, and what, what could happen if I put more, more of that on myself for just yeah. any hunt, any but tag. I, but I think now that you've, we've all kind of had those experiences. I think it does bleed into other hunts. We might not realize it, but I think it is. Yeah. And I always try to look at it now. It's like, well, one thing, life isn't a given. Like I want to put all the effort in every single hunt I go on. Me hunting the next year isn't a quite given. I might not draw any tags or I might mm-hmm. get injured or, you know, whatever I might have to go hunting. So it's like, you kind of do pressure all the time, but you might not realize you're now at a higher level because now you're continuing that on. It might not seem like you're doing a lot, but maybe you still mm-hmm. are, but now you're just, you know, more prepared because you've had those yeah. pressure moments in your life and just taking it to another level. To your point of making you better because of the pressure, would I have wandered around the desert this morning at 5.30 a.m. taking random shots like on a, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah. But why Why did I, when my alarm went off, we just, we got back yesterday from the Santalope hunt. I was dog tired. Mm-hmm. My alarm went off this morning. I didn't feel great, but like I had the, the mm-hmm. pressure literally of the sheep hunt. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ruck. And I'm going to wander around the desert and I'm going to shoot non-normal distances today. Yeah. And that's what made me go do it. Is the pressure for you guys the, uh, what is it exactly? Is it the, is it the cost of the permit, the cost of the trip? Is it the, you know, the fact that you've burned bonus points on, on a hunt that, you know, you can't apply for so many years? Is it, you know, the fact that you work in a hunting industry and you're, you know, quote unquote, myself included, I'm saying this about me as well Is like, is it this, like, I'm supposed to fill tags. I'm supposed to be a good hunter. Like, what is it for you? Is it all that? Or is it any of it? I think it has to be a lot of it. I don't think it's just, I don't think it's one exact thing. I know, I know filming a hunt adds a lot more pressure than a normal hunt. I definitely know that. Like we were hunting there yesterday, you know, it felt like not a lot of pressure, even though it was pressure because we had wanted to try to find a target buck and get it killed for him because it was a great buck. Like it didn't feel as much pressure as something else because mm-hmm. the cameras aren't rolling, yep. you know. Like yeah, that's a weird one, huh? Like that's it's hard. It's hard. It, it's, it's, yeah. it's it's a lot of pressure when you put someone a camera in front of someone if they've never been experienced to it before. But I think almost all hunts though, it's there's a pressure scenario. You just got to figure out what that pressure scenario is. And do you like, feel pressure to kill an animal because you're Brady Miller? There's sometimes for sure. Yeah, yeah, there definitely is. I mean, I think it's you go through waves. Like yeah. you can't let it get to you though. I mean, yeah, I, 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 hunt, I hunt for my own reasons at the end sure. of the day. Like I love hunting and I always will. And I would hunt with, if I didn't ever even work here, I'd still be doing yeah. the same thing I do. And I'd still be broke, poor, putting all my money, every part of my effort into it. But it's like, yeah, and I was different. And yeah, I was social media and people say people hunt for social. I don't do that. Like I just, I just hunt. That's the only thing I've ever done. Yeah. I'll be real honest with you. And I've never really talked about it, but like 
I, I got off of social. Mm-hmm. When was that? That was, oh, that was, I was off for a while. A long time. But I did it a long time ago. Yeah. And I did it because I, I found myself pressure because of the founder of Go Hunt and, and yeah. being successful. And he's killing And animals. I hated it. Yeah. And it was, bu- and it bugged I, you. I didn't like how I felt. That's mm-hmm. not me. I enjoy hunting, one, for just the disconnection. That's yep. what I always have enjoyed about it. I've never felt closer to God in any circumstance other than being on a mountain glassing like that. That's what I always loved about hunting. And it, and it got to me for hundred percent when I was younger, like it, it was what is, wasn't as mature. Didn't have a family, mm-hmm. you know, like perception because of a family, all, like I, right. It just, mm-hmm. it got to me and I, yeah. and I didn't like, I didn't like that. It's, so we, said, it's, it's weird. Isn't it? So I said, mm-hmm. I'm going to fix this real easy. I'm going to get rid of all this shit. Yeah. Kind of, kind of bizarre. I'm going back to, why I got into hunting in the first place. Mm-hmm. That's what I've done over the last, I've been off for a long time, five, six years. But now with my family, like that per se, I can genuinely tell you, I don't give a shit about. <laughs> That's a good place, to, good, yeah, like good, it's a good great place, place to be in. Yeah. And it was exact that, that break from social and my family's had a lot to do with this mm-hmm. too. Having, having kids and you know, everyone tells you perception changes when you have kids, but like, God damn, it really changes yeah. like big time changes. And now I can genuinely say, I don't give a shit about what people think <laughs> yeah. if I'm successful or not. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah. That's good. It's a good place to be in. Yeah. Yeah. But the pressure for me is the opportunity. Like I look at the opportunity of the pressure where burning 14 points on an elk tag being locked out for 10 years. I, I look at that. That's too. pressure. I, I look That's, at, I look at time. So both time away from family, you know, family responsibilities and then, you know, work time away from work, money, Money mm-hmm. spent on it, which I mean, I don't have all the money in the world, so it's like if I'm gonna invest, you know, 680 bucks in elk tag in Colorado, I feel like I want to bust my ass and fill that mm-hmm. tag. Like yeah. I feel like I want to justify the cost of the trip and the time, and like those are the kinds of things. And then the other thing I think about a lot is it's like I know I'm capable of it. You know, like if I go out there, I have, and I've I've done some hunts. Like I did a I did an elk hunt in Idaho where I know I didn't give that tag justice. Like mm-hmm. I I, I kind of sailed it in a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, compared to what I think I'm capable of. I hate that feeling on the back it's end. The worst. Couldn't I hate it. Hate it. I, I, hate I quit it. early on a hunt back in the day, and it tore me up till still to this day. Left the mountain early. Yeah. yeah. Same. I've had the same, and I can't stand myself. I still think of it, it right now. Yeah. Cannot stand myself. What would have happened if I had stayed the other like two days? Yeah. What yep. would have happened? Yep. Yeah. Even if nothing happened, at least you still, go. On, at least you go at least with you the satisfaction that you gave it your effort. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. your your thing about time away for family too, pressure of justifying the sacrifice of the time away. Yeah. Like the stone sheep hunt, like mm-hmm. the, it's a lot of days. Cause yeah. you put two days of travel on front end, two days of travel on back end. Got my wife seven months pregnant. It's like, I better justify that time away. You know? Mm-hmm. But, well, I hope, I hope you can put it all aside and enjoy it. I know. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I always, th- I always remind myself, like there's a lot of times I'll wake up in the morning, I'm on the mountain, you know? And if, if I start thinking, I'll have, you know, today's the day I got to fill my tag and I got to find elk. I got to kill. I got to harvest. I I take a moment to think, you know what, man, what a cool, cool opportunity for me to be waking up right here in the mountain Mm -hmm, on a tent, you know, and it's 50 degrees or 40 degrees and I'm in a warm down sleeping bag and I've got this time to myself to like kind of think and process and just like enjoy sun, sunrise. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I told you that story with Bo baby Mm -hmm. Yeah, about my most special, but Mm -hmm. that hunt changed a lot for me. Bo changed a lot for me. And then you add on my son everything he had been through and everything I can t- like I've, I've grown a lot like mentally just being able to self-reflect and get in the right headspace before and I can genuinely say I know for a fact I'll enjoy this hunt I will I've already committed I've already had I've already gone through my mental prep of like yes I am going to be away yes mm-hmm. I am sacrificing yes I could come back as an idiot on a stone shima and I'm settled there so now it's like okay let's go and let's go enjoy it yeah you know it comes with age, age and, for sure, and some things that help you change that perception. Mm-hmm. Bo Beatty, my yeah. son, my family, like just yeah, those little changes. Like, all right, mm-hmm. okay, this is what it is. I'm settled there. My mind is settled. I'm not anxious. Now let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I even look at last year. You know, I love mule deer. I didn't kill a single mule deer last year. Wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wild. So like, part of it could be like, oh, I, maybe I feel pressure to kill, you know, mule deer because I love them so much. I love hunting them. I love talking about mule. I love talking about tactics. But at the end of the day, I was fine on the first leg of that mule deer sabbatical to walk away. 
and not harbor something. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned in some of the self-filming videos, like part of me feels like it's a failure in a sense. Like I, I'm here to kill. But also I was happy walking away because I didn't feel pressure to pull a trigger on an animal that wasn't mature enough for me. Yeah. Where yeah. I've grown to that level now where I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I enjoy the other parts. Like, yeah, I talked in the last podcast. I love big, I love big antlers. I love hunting old mature deer, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I, I was stumbling on my words there, but there's a lot more deeper meaning to that. But it's like, <laughs> I love being in that place to, you know, pursue an animal that I want to go after and eating a tag now is kind of okay. And then I went into the second leg. Now I think, well, now I'm going to slam it. Now I'm going to find a giant, you know, didn't find the bucks I wanted to, didn't find the quality deer, shot that, you know, raghorn bull. I didn't need any, didn't, I ate both my Mueller tags and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think it's good to have those conversations with yourself before you leave. You know, I, I think your intent is that you're always going out there and you're going to fill your tag. Like, I'm going to do absolutely everything in my power to fill my permit. I'm going to just give it hell when I get out there. Yeah. I think it's good to have those conversations with yourself a little bit. With about, your higher self. Yeah, with your higher you self. you got to sit down and About what, what, what is the reason I'm going and what, you know, yeah. what, is it, what, what is it potentially might feel like if I don't, if I don't. Because, I mean, you're going to Alaska. Yeah. To hunt moose. It's expensive. Like, how many times does a person get... Am I supposed to say that? Sorry, is that why you're laughing? Oh, no, I mean, you can't. Oh, you can. Yeah, I'm just like, how We're many? We're here for the people, Brady. We're, We're here for the people. How many times are most people going to be able to go to Alaska and hunt moose on their own DIY style? Like, it's that's it. I've only done it once. It was like yeah. the dream, you know, my dream as a kid. Yeah. And I don't know if I'll ever get back, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. I'm thinking about it right now. Like, it is <laughs> literally. You were stressed the whole antelope hunt. Of yeah, it's, it's, it's so we antelope hunted for, you know, a day and a half or whatever, drove back all night. And what you're saying earlier, I still got my workout in last night. Mm-hmm. I could still I made that. a priority yeah. to go out and run. Mm-hmm. And you know, now here we are. It's a Saturday right now. So we'll say it's a Saturday. Yeah. Like we did a podcast earlier. We're doing a podcast now. Tomorrow is my last day to really pack my gear, get all finalized. I'm showing up at the office on Monday morning, do a gear list video. So I have pressure there to like make sure I have all my gear dialed for the video, do a really great job on that to explain everything. And then I leave Monday night. And here we are on a Saturday. I still have to go edit all those photos from Archie Antelope or the Antelope Hunt. We just got on it. There's a lot Took of pressure, a lot of, photos a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on right now to make it so my hunt's going to be enjoyable, but I love it. Yeah. Like there's nothing I'd rather be doing. And I love this stacked up, like just, I'm just riding an adrenaline from day after day after day right now. Like <laughs> I don't sleep. Like you saw my recovery <laughs> scores from my whoop thing. It's seven, like ne- 7% first day, 13% next day. Yeah. That's how like low of sleep and recovery I am, but I'm still working out. I'm still doing everything I can trying to like get dialed for this hunt. And I'm so excited. I don't think... Like I am very prepared, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I'm prepared. Yeah, I don't know if I can, that's a good way to explain it, but like, yeah. and it's, just, it's going to a moose hunt. It's a lot of pressure. Like once I get up there, and you know we're out in the middle of nowhere, and that's it. I'm here now. Yeah, like now we figure out you know what's going to make yeah. success on this hunt or not, and it's a dream hunt. I want to ask you though, Trail, because mm-hmm. you're the one that asked it. You have, do you feel pressure being Trail? Because the reason why I ask this is. You, whether you want to admit it or not, you're known as one of the better hunters anyone's ever been around, just like your ability with animal and animal behaviors and all that stuff. But you're not a social guy. Yeah. Like you're... I don't. You don't feel it? I don't. Not really. Like I, maybe a little bit. I'd be lying if I said that like I didn't, uh, you know, cruise social media when I get home and like see a big, you know, a big buck or a big bull and think, why, why is, why is that not me? Mm -hmm. And it's pretty clear why it wasn't me. Like I, I hadn't put the time in or the effort in, right. You know, like I, I get it, but I, I don't, I used to, there was a time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that it was necessarily tied to, you know, me being trail per se. I think it probably was like, I, I really well, used to eat me alive if I didn't fill a tag, like that well, would really bug the shit out of me. And I'm, I don't mean, you mm-hmm. know, trail. I mean, you just in your circles, you are known as like, you were one of the better hunters anyone knows. Yeah. I, maybe I don't know. I'll I mean, say you, you are. I don't. I don't that's, know. So that's why I'm asking. Like, did you do you feel that from your inner circles of no, everyone knows you I to d- be? I don't really think I am. Like, I I don't know, man. I I, I look at the, across the people that I know. Like, I could probably name five guys in my neighborhood that I I would look at their collections of animals and the things that they do, and I'm like, you know what, that guy's a way better hunter than I am. You know, I don't know if it's true or not. It's just kind of where my head goes. I'd be but, willing to bet though if you asked them, they would say you. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I'd I don't, be willing to bet. Yeah. That. I mean, I don't post a lot. Like, I don't feel any pressure to post. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know why. I just don't. It's not that I don't like sharing. It's like I've told you, go hunt and share whatever they want of mine. Yeah. I don't care, you know. I just don't post a lot of my own. And I don't know. I, I think I'm just getting old, per se. Yeah. But I, 
I, I don't. I don't think I do. But I respect that, though, because you're doing other things. You're, you're becoming a better hunter by not being on social. Like you're able to shoot bows, your arrows every morning where most people might wake up. They're going to scroll through Instagram. You're out there grinding it day after day to make yourself better. Yeah, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't scroll. Th- I, if I told you I didn't scroll through Instagram a little bit, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, worry. you're not, yeah, make, making, worry a, you're not making a priority. No, you're no, it's not, huge, but not, not it's even not social. Just take just your social network. Like not not oh, no. not phone. I don't. Social, I don't like have one. This is this, social. Is this is my social network. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't. I, yeah. It would probably scare you guys how much a loner I truly am. Like oh, I, I, we've gotten you. You love your alone time. That's yeah, I'm sure. I'm alone a lot. I don't have a big social circle, but I. I don't keep in touch with a lot of people, even my my own family, my brothers. They'll they'll they tell you that it might be every third day or something before I get back to them. But yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel a lot of pressure per se. I would say most of the pressure that I feel is just on myself because I think I know I'm capable. Yeah, I know I have the skill set. I know I have the ability. Uh, most of the pressure I feel is just on myself. Like if I don't do it justice for what I think my own ability is, then I feel disappointed and mostly yeah. just in myself. So that's that's a good. So having that conversation with your higher self mm-hmm. before hunts and having that mental battle, that internal getting situated. So there's no anxiety, none of that stuff. What I've found in, in doing that having those, you know, whether you want to call it meditation or whatever it is, like that conversation with your higher self. So I've gotten better at that and being more matured about that. It's like now the pressure is I know I'm capable to get it done. Mm-hmm. Just like you said. And if I don't give it everything, I know when I come home, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be a good person. Yeah. I'm not going to be my best self. Cause when I get home and the hunt's over and I can't go back and be successful, even though I, I know I'm capable, yeah. it is going to eat at me. Yeah. And then I'm going to be a bad husband, a bad dad. I'm going to be shitty at work <laughs> and it's going to last a while. You know, yep. that's where that pressure yeah, like and the sheep once, on, that's once, what's coming. Once from. once the last day of the season is over, it's over. It is that's over. it. You're not there. You can't for, save you, yourself. You don't it's get done. another chance at it for another year. Yeah. If that, you know what I mean? Depending yeah. on what, what tag you have. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Perspective is a lot, is a lot of it. Yeah. You, and that's why, that's why I got off social is having those mm-hmm. meditation sessions. And I'm like, this is not me. I don't like, I don't like me right now. Yeah. I and think then social's then good as it. long as you just kind of, you have a better perspective of what yeah. it is, you know, yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah. And now it's all on. Well, don't be a shitty person when you get home. So <laughs> give it, give it what it's worth. There's only one way then yeah. to not be a shitty person is just give it all exactly. when you're out there. Exactly. <laughs> That's the best feeling. Like I said, it's the the best feeling in the world is like when you give it your all and it works out the way that you hoped it would. And, we and just you, talked and you, about and you fill the tag. There's literally no better feeling. I mean, it is on the one. You, it, yeah. When you fill it on the yeah, one, it, it is euphoric. When you yeah. feel that, when you've put your heart and soul and all the work and all the prep and you've scouted and hunted hard, and that comes together when seemingly it feels like it's impossible. When that works, it's it's euphoric. You know. And I, I love that feeling, but you know, I, and if I give it my all and it doesn't work, I can live with that. Like exactly. I'm not, I'm not happy about it, but at least you I, can, I can live with it. Yeah. At least you can sleep yeah. and be like, yep. Yeah. I just, when I it really, when it really eats at me is when I, I left something yeah. on the table. I didn't fail cause I quit. I didn't fail because I didn't work at it. I just, I just you, failed cause I cause, failed. Yeah. You know? Cause the wind switch. Yeah. Like yeah. you can live with that one. Yeah. I don't know. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's interesting. Are you, do you feel this elk tag that you have? You feel it more there. You feel it on this Alaska thing. More on the elk tag by far. Yeah, I would. I would think. Really, so. I would feel it more in Alaska. No, dude. because I would want it so bad. Really? Oh yeah. yeah, man. When I went to Alaska, I was like, I want this so bad because this is like my chance. Well, your to, childhood dream too. Yeah, right? I just. Yeah. Oh, I was. I wanted it so bad. Yeah, it, they're they're both similar, mm-hmm. but knowing that you know I drew a premium premium tag, phenomenal water year, just a good year all the way around. Yeah, and it's just. I don't know. And, and like, I'm not an elk hunter. So that's a lot that right there. That's a lot of pressure being like, I always tell people like, don't do what I'm doing right now. Like I've obviously killed some bulls. I've killed a metric ton of cows. Like, so I can't say I've just jumping in this blind, but like I should have been going on some other elk hunts preparing for this to get more knowledge about elk, to get, you know, learning how to judge elk, learning how to, you know, the habits and movements and everything else. So I'm just kind of going in, like I tell people not to do all the time, do all other hunts. And then when you draw your premium tag, it could be very skilled. You'd be ready. Yeah. You're ready. So like I luckily I've, you know, I've been hunting all the time. So I know how to, you know, probably you know go how to hunt. You're going to be fine. Yeah. The, only, the only potential skill that I could even think of, but, and I, and I say this even loosely is just absolute, just judging, judging. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. That's why I've joked, you know, I'm going to have some flashcards. <laughs> like, it's like, not a bad some, idea. I have some flashcards. What's, what's the 340 bull? What's the 350 bull? It's not I'm a not bad gonna, idea. Screenshots on your phone. Yeah. Well, yeah. then ultimately you're going to shoot a bull that you love, yeah. that you like. Yep. I, yeah. Like I've always so said. you're going to be okay. If it's in a cool area, a cool stock opportunity, and I'm with some cool people, like I'll mm -hmm. go after any sort of animal and it's like, that's going to be a dream for me. You know, that's actually a really good point because you just reminded me of something else. Those conversations with my higher self that I decided. Numbers, don't, I don't get, I used to, right? Because you always want to tell, mm -hmm. you always want to say something that's just kind of like that flash. When you're young, right? You want that attention, whatever it is. It's like, dude, if something has the look, that's way cooler. Yeah, the look So I just kind of made that like, yeah, I'm settled there. Who gives a mm -hmm. shit? If it's got mm -hmm. the look and it's just, I'm in, man. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I always said if I wake up and it's snowing two feet last night and it's a gi not giant nasty snowstorm, I spot a buck out in this cliff. And it's just turned. Just, just turned the right way. I'm like, this is a cool experience right now. Yeah. I'm going to have to go all over the deep snow. My yeah. scope's going to be all you know, covered in snow, everything. And then I kill a buck. That buck means more to me than a big giant yep. deer yep. because of that situation I'm going to be in. And then the other pressure I have, like we're talking about this elk thing, it's an open sight muzzleloader. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So oh. I have, I'm a weapon limited in a sense. Like, yeah, the technology got a lot better on muzzleloader, but I'm still, you know, one shot. I got to make a perfect one shot. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about trying to make the best one shot possible. And I've killed things with muzzleloaders before, but I'm not like, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on, uh, you know, muzzleloaders, but I love muzzleloaders. I shoot them all the time. But so that's another challenge to it. I got to get a lot closer. And when mm -hmm. I get close, you know, a lot of things happen when you get close. Like when I was up there before, there's a lot of bulls in this unit. Mm hmm. A lot of eyes that potentially like yeah, there's not a lot of hunters and a lot of tags and it's such a you know coveted unit, but and I want to just I want to do something too that uh, you know my family everyone I grew up in Minnesota everyone thinks elk are the coolest thing in the world, so I also they have pressure. Are, they are they're right. <laughs> yeah, so also have that kind of, <laughs> so also have that kind of like <laughs> this trail just slipped down on him. You're they're, they're, they're absolutely they're, they're, right. I was okay. late to the point you just made and then it connected. I'm like, oh, I slipped it. Yeah. Got it. So, so then I kind of have another built pressure on there because everyone in my family has always wanted me to be, elk, be an elk hunter since mm -hmm. I live out west. Like you live out west, Again, you should elk hunt. Genius. Yeah. So I, I have, agree with everything your family's told you. Yeah. So, so then, far. So right now, keep that, going. <laughs> we're, we're on a roll. Yeah, we're on a roll. So now I feel like I have a, a pressure to live up to their expectations because they're living vicariously through me. Mm -hmm. They yeah. want me to kill what I want to kill an animal, and they want to you know see me kill a giant bull, and. I've never done that before. I've never killed a true giant once in a lifetime bull because I've never focused on it. I have, ta I have per you know, points in every single state for us. Mm -hmm. So eventually I'm going to, you know, start pounding these off and going cool adventures, but like I've never done it. And they all want me to be an elk hunter. And now it's my chance to quote unquote, be that elk hunter. Everyone right? does. Yeah. I don't want you to be an elk hunter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do, so, do you, do you, do you, honestly, do you think there's any, part of you that's like maybe you do turn into like because you do have these points everywhere yeah i have a lot of, i like i will have a string here of some yeah. giant bulls probably and because as, i'm willing to wait for the premium tag and as you should because you've been doing this for a long time yeah. multi-state all this stuff but like with that on the uh, on your mind like do you see yourself becoming you know like killing big bulls is they are big they're the beast of everything so like shoot 60 inch beams and 20 inch front it's like it is just it's so visually captivating because of how big they are you do you find no. yourself at all no really <laughs> and i'll say that even with what this, i just laid out yeah and i'll say it with a total straight face no <laughs> no elk uh, does not do it for me. i would rather hunt a black bear every single year than an elk <laughs> I, I i've made it known elk's not my favorite i want to clear out of here because you're about to get struck by lightning <laughs> <laughs> what I, you said is blasphemous uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like I've made it known I'm not elk are not my favorite, mm -hmm. and you know, I, and I've said you guys can have all the elk out there as long as I get the deer and antelope. There is a part of me though that's like when you do have an elk tag, just that visual captivation, captivating mm -hmm. look, like mm -hmm. man, it, there is a draw to it, and that's that that is what I love about. And then, I mean, obviously you get into the rut, like man, mm -hmm. I can never not do archery elk hunts like this is as good as it gets but just that visual like there, holy yeah. shit man 60 right. inch beams in these fronts and it's like whoa yeah, that's so, cool so i give elk a lot of shit you guys know that like yeah i call them mountain carp I'm, most people hopefully know i'm, I'm joking in a way when i know the frat boys but it's like a part of me you know i also do it because like they just don't do it for me like like i obviously and they do it for you they but, just but here's, don't here, do here's it, the, here, it for, for you, you. <laughs> here, here's the thing though every hunt i go on i fucking love it like it's literally the coolest thing ever. So I'm hunting elk, hunting antelope, hunting a black bear, hunting everything. That's 
that moment of time, that's my favorite thing in the yeah, world to like do. To so I like to hunt. So I'm going to enjoy that part of it. But if I, I'll, if I had to choose, and I'm not trying to, I'm trying to take out bias, even though there's probably a lot of bias here. Like I would rather hunt a mule deer every single year for the rest of my life. And if I could give up those elk points and trade them straight over to mule deer points, if they allowed me to do that, I would do that. Yeah, valid, val- super valid. But I want to press you on something. Okay. Not ne- that's not necessarily what I was going for. Specifically, I'm going for. You say that they don't do it for you, mm-hmm. but if you start hunting these big bulls mm, yeah. and that visual. Okay, I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Do you find yourself getting into looking at an animal that is? They are just built different. They visually speaking, right? When you glass up big bulls, it is like holy shit, man. That is that's crazy. Yeah. Do you see yourself getting into that? No. Okay. I just try to lay it out again. Fair enough. Like you know, I'm, Ryan Ryan Lampers and I are really good friends, and I you know we talk a lot. We text back and forth, and you know we have a very similar saying: mule deer. The why they're so special is the places they take you. Elk doesn't take me. I've never been able to say elk confidently can take me the places that a mule deer can take me. It's basically sheep hunting, mountain goat hunting, but on a do-it-yourself affordable level, I can do it every single year. And those elk are not in the places where I like to go. They're not in the rocks. They're not up in the top. It's not. They are. They are. They, Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they so, are. It's, I definitely, you know, you can be right. But the majority of the time, where am I going to be at when I'm elk hunting? For the most part, I'm going to be deep in the timber. What do I like? I like big mountains. I like landscape. I like seeing country. I like waking up every day and be like, wow, look at this. I'm overlooking this giant mountain base instead of like, oh, here I am in the dark timber walking around where I can only see 50 yards in front of me chasing some noisy bugles. Man, I think your hunt, I think, is going to be a lot more like what you're saying. I do too. There is some of it for this hunt, yes. And some of these other areas I'm kind of chasing. Yeah, well, I'm trying. I've been trying. It's no, you you, gotta, you, you gotta it, 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 it's a great, it is you're a great right. discussion. I get what you're saying. Maybe we'll if I do see hunt. What he has to say after his after. hunt. Then, yeah. yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious as to see if his I, attitude. I don't you, know if he'll admit it if they did. You, can, does, you, you can already fun. quote me right now. I guarantee I'll come back and say that was a freaking phenomenal hunt. I loved every second of it because I will. But like I said, it. I'd rather go after a mule deer. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Weird. I've known bass backwards. I know all that. I know no, I, I don't think. I don't. I, look. I'm with you. I want to kill every deer and antelope. You guys can have all the elk, but that's not. That's not ever going to happen. You won't ever have to choose. Yeah, we'll never have to choose. No, no. The, but the, it's, the, but the real the point and the reality is, will they ever do something for you? Like for me, I there's no way I could give up an archery elk hunt so, for the rest of my life. They just they do it for so, me in that. And then that <laughs> when you glass up a big bull that first like holy shit that thing is giant so the only time i've ever gotten this elk bug if you can call it that (laughs) was helping my brother on his montana elk tag because that was his dream yeah Mm. that was legit all he ever wanted to do and he drew it with five points he got super lucky you know he drew a primo unit in Montana, and went out there and hunted elk too, and that's all he ever wanted to do. We need so some be- Miller luck, dude. We do. What are we doing? No kidding. So because of that, we need the other Miller, the elk yeah, one. The yeah. elk which Miller. Miller? Which Miller is the yeah. elk Miller? Bryce. 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 Yeah. So that was a moment where it put me in a different mindset because I was with him on the same page. I was wanting this for him so bad, and wanted to do everything I could to figure out where these big bulls are hanging out. And then I just kind of. I loved elk hunting at that moment because I wanted it for him. Mm-hmm. That makes so, that, I see what you're saying. That makes total sense. So that moment, elk was everything. And I could see why his drive in his whole life, like I said, the Midwest thing, like all the elk they ever thought about was elk hunting. Like when he drew that tag, like he called me and made, he's like, you go check the jar results. I want to make sure I'm seeing the same thing. <laughs> like I drew that tag. It was that important to him. Like <laughs> that's all he could talk about was his elk hunt coming up, you know? And we like, you know, pulled the snowmobile trailer over, got like a 55 gallon drum of gas. So we had enough gas for the side by side and the truck and everything and like camping in negative degree temperatures. And, you know, the snowmobile trailer got frozen. So we couldn't get out once. So we had to take a blowtorch on the side of the door <laughs> inside awesome. to get th- it was frosted in. Like Good that's the moment. You have to pee real bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like the stuff that he wanted. And like, that was like, this is elk hunting's phenomenal at that point because I was with him doing it. Mm. And that's what rose up to that level. But I was like, I was chasing that dream with him. I was like, I felt like I was the tag holder, even though I wasn't Mm -hmm. because I was living through him. And now your family's living through you. Yeah. Now they're doing the same thing again. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish my brother could be on the same hunt with me because I was on his big bull and I want him to be here, but get him out here. He's Bryce. Him and his wife are having their first kid. Ooh, that's a tough one. Do do the 17th of October. (laughs) My hunt starts the 22nd. 
Mm. And so my dad can't even come out. That's a tough one. That so is I, tough. I, so I'm, I'm super stoked on them for having, you know, their first yeah. kid is super awesome because my mom's really excited for that. Bring her with. Bring, I, yeah. <laughs> what would be better than, you know? We'll have a medic. Yeah. She's, having, she's having eight, eight months and 28 days pregnant. Yeah. We could, we could maybe put a wall tent down below and they could hang out there. And that There is only one valid excuse for, the, for you know, not being brother and this or whatever. Having a kid. I yeah, that's it. a good one. That's a good one. Yep. Valid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's valid. Well, you leave. You leave Monday then. Leave Monday. Leave Monday night. Yeah. Well, good luck. Gonna take a red eye. I'm. I'm super excited. Like you said, there's this, there's pressure on it, but I'm enjoying yeah. it. Next few weeks, we should all. It should all be really interesting. This yeah. is like when it gets really fun. You know, yeah. it's fun to catch up on everybody's success. I saw Adam. Adam and his dad. They kill a cow elk mm-hmm. early. God, he was pumped too. Yeah. It's awesome to see. Scott, Scott's out hunting antelope. Braden's um, wife. Braden's wife Dude, killed Charles. a trophy spike. <laughs> That's That's massive. Massive. That's Bro, I texted him and I was like, she just killed a future 380. <laughs> I'm like, that well, that spike is a big spike. Yeah. I'm like, his bases were massive. Are no. Yeah, I mean they're big. As big he as said this, you showed it to me in the truck when we were driving up to yeah. Antelope, and I'm like, holy shit, that thing's heavy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny about that is he said the, he messaged me back. Hopefully you won't mind me saying this, but he said that she was like committed to killing a spike. She would not kill a cow. Said they got into like 130, and he said they mm. were talking. They played it perfectly, and she was able to slip in and slip an arrow. But I thought that was so cool. Yeah, that is cool. That she killed that spike, and she was so committed to killing a spike, mm-hmm. and then she killed a, a future for 380 spike. That, was that a is a spike. That, that's <laughs> what you you better at that least you're on spike. that spike. That, that was a big spike. Cool. Did, we, did we post that to Gohan's timeline? Or was I don't, that a I don't story? know. We, we, oh, oh, we eventually we will. Should. So by the yeah. time it's probably released, we'll have it on the yeah we should. the timeline. Yeah, so you guys can check out that spike because that spike us. That was super cool. But you you start Monday and it rolls for you from then on out. Yeah, Brady's out of the office. You a lot. Yeah. Don't tell Porter. <laughs> oh, he's aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to get a little cardboard cut out and put it in my office. Yeah, exactly. The thing, would, crazy thing for funny. me and Brady, though, is I'm out twice on two backcountry hunts. Not mm-hmm. not a ton of hunting comparative to what I've done in the bet. But the way it falls, Brady and I, come Monday, will not see each other because of the way we... Yeah, he, he's he's in, I'm out, I'm out, he's We won't see each other till like... November? Yeah, it could be till after I get back from uh, one of my first mule deer hunts. Yeah. That's in November. That's how long it's going to be. You can, you can probably only catch up when you're like in transit, the two of you. Yeah, just, yeah. hey, how'd it go? Yeah, yeah. hey, how, how's things? Here's a photo. Mm-hmm. You're hunting too, though, right now. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of hunting. Yeah, I'm going to go out probably tomorrow. I'll probably grab a day, maybe midweek, and then over Labor Day, I'll probably take like a, a seven-day chunk and just run out and see what I can turn up. Yeah. I'm going to try to try to kill a trophy spike too. Better be heavier. I don't know if you could do it. <laughs> I don't though. think I'm going to. That you, was a big one. You're heading out right for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. I got my bag loaded. Yep. Probably Good for you. probably drive tonight and then pack in and spend the night and hunt tomorrow. And yeah, I'm still looking, still shopping, still still cruising, making the most of my time in the field and just really enjoying being out this year. I can't think of a time, to be honest, in a number of years where I've just legitimately enjoyed enjoyed being out for what it is. Just being outdoors and just like yeah. really appreciating the time away from from everything else and just kind of being disconnected and, and just being outside. It's been really nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's a good kick off to all the long hours we've had early in the year too. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. my wife and I are. got the clear from her, uh, I don't know what they're called when you're pregnant, the doctor, you go see. Uh, oh, yeah. Is that an OB? Whatever. We got the clear and she has, um, we have some general archery. Utah tags. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go do that over Labor Day. Something cool. Something to go do with my wife and son. So that's Is good she news. Hunting? Yeah, she's, we got the clear that she can elevation. I mean, yep. she's seven plus months pregnant. Yeah. Um, so she's, it'll be, it'll be tough, but. You Is know. she excited too? She, yeah, does she, she just wants it? to get out. Yeah, she, she really wants to get out, which I is bet. cool. We got the clear. So, so that's good, but like she's gonna have to take it pretty easy. Yep. Um, but at least it's something just to the point of being outside. Yeah. She wants I, to I bet be she outside. Does. Yeah. I cannot, cool. I can't fathom. I can't imagine being pregnant. <laughs> oh. I just, that's a lot. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What a, yeah, you talk about sacrifice. What a sacrifice. Nine months, you know, and then those what, little what that does to your, come out and you just, what that does to your body. And then, yeah, I mean, and then know, they just, just take reco- over. recovery, but then the little shithead comes out and it takes over your whole life. Mm-hmm. Like you can't help, but yeah, like you don't care about you anymore. It is like, yep. okay, you just took over my whole life and I love it. Yep. So here we go. Yep. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Well, good deal. Uh, Anything else? want to hit our 
promo promo code promo guys you need to sign up for gohan insider count tell me why trail it's awesome <laughs> it's a good um, answer. so you you got uh you know draw odds which i'm already thinking of. It sounds weird i mean it's I, I'm september's th- knocking on the door I, yeah september's coming up which is weird to think that you would already be thinking about next year's potential plan for the season but you you have points coming up so purchase only points in Montana, Montana, Wyoming, Montana, Wyoming, and Oregon, and Oregon, right? All three of those states. It's you're kind of bumping up towards those windows of pr- purchasing preference points or bonus points. So that's one little caveat, yeah. one little nice perk. And then I'm already thinking about draws and how to potentially spend my points next year. Uh, you've got December first is your Idaho going on sale. You got Arizona OTC. So like, there's time right now that you can still start doing some research for next year. Um, also right now I'm just putting a ton of time. I know it sounds weird for me, but I'm putting a lot of time behind maps. Um, I had to, I told you the last podcast, Trail. I actually had to use my map. Mm-hmm. I got a little lost, turned around in the fog. So, you know, I'm actually using go hunt maps. So you're going to get your maps with your insider purchase. If we can get trail, yeah, we can get anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I, I don't know. I don't this. know. If, I don't know if that's a true statement. No, that's, if you, if but, we can get you using yeah. a, a phone yeah, thing, app, yeah, map, we can get anyone. Yeah, so sign up for an insider account. There's a lot of good reasons, it's all, all the reasons. And then you're going to get points back on your purchases in the gear shop, which it seems like every time I'm down here the last few weeks, my wife is like, hey, what's the deal with these purchases, you know? So I'm buying, I'm shopping, I'm picking up extra gear in the in the gear shop. So you're going to get dollars back on your purchases if you are a member. There's a lot of reasons to become an insider. Can I tell you an anecdotal reason? Mm-hmm. Of, you brought up thinking about next year in draws. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time since I've had a Nevada deer tag, mm-hmm. my home state. I have quite a few right now, and I have heard some things, mm-hmm. and I have, I am on Insider, and I am checking. Yeah. I've heard some things. So I'm already thinking about Nevada application next year Yep, because we've been open since August 10th. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of good friends in Nevada. I just yep. heard some things through the grapevine, and I, I am on Insider, and I am looking. How many times are you like traveling from your home state to another state or another area to go hunt and you drive through an area and you're like, oh, you know, I might, you see an animal, you yep. see a landscape and you start thinking, huh, I wonder what the opportunities are here. Yeah. You know, you pull those up and you can really start to cruise them and look through them and see. I was I was driving, I'm, dropping, I'm dropping yeah, waypoints I, when I'm I driving. I do that a lot. Yeah. I do I that all the time. I was just driving through my home state. I'm mm-hmm. born and raised here, going on the Nevada hunt, but it was quite, it was quite the drive. Yep. I'm already going back, looking at some of those units. I've never... I'm a home. You think you know, but yeah. then you start looking. And you're like, man, I don't know. I don't know about this. This uh-huh. is cool. This yeah. is a good opportunity. You know, in my own home state. It happens a lot for antelope. Yeah, you, you'll just be driving, and all of a sudden, down off the side of the highway, you're like, oh, there's an antelope. That looks like a great buck. You know, you pull up what your insider account. Yeah. You're like, what unit is that? What are my draw odds like? What's exactly. the public private land look like in this unit? Just you know, did it. Yeah, just just did it. So there's a lot of reasons. So like I said, use the promo code podcast. Sign up for a Go Hunt Insider account or even a Maps portion mm-hmm. of our account. So the Explorer account, if you just need Maps to navigate, um, you know you get points back on your purchases. You're also going to get points when you sign up as an insider. You get fifty points back. So sign up, podcast, promo code podcast. Use and, it and let's go hunting. Oh my we're, hell! It's so we're all out for a while. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Let's go hunting. I'm mashing my foot down, headed north, and I'm going hunting. <laughs> yes, true. Good luck. Man. I wish you nothing but the best. I yeah, can't wait luck. for some photos. Yeah, likewise, guys. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. I feel sad almost. I, I know. <laughs> it's weird. I feel kind of sad. It's like we're leaving. The it's band kind of is going to be... Oh, the, we're breaking the band the up. The band is going to be disconnected for a while. We're going to have a lot of Trail Brady <laughs> and a lot of Me yeah. Trail. Yeah. No, no one feature I wish we could get is a group message on InReach. On yeah. Going inReach. Yeah. So we, mm. could, we could stay together instead of sending them individually. So I have to copy the same thing I send, send it to someone else. Yeah. And I want to modify it to make it personal to that person too. So it's like, I wish we could get a group yeah. thread on, mm-hmm. on Garmin. So Garmin, if you're listening, make some group, group threads. Can you not do that? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. I've never I've tried never, it. I don't. I'm, I almost wondered if you can. I doubt it, bud. You think so? My, my, my talking not truth. Is it, is, I can don't you do know. It? I, I want to say know. that you can. I, I have thought. But just not tried. I want to say that you can. Interesting. I want to say that it's happened. I think the boys I, are together then. The band's going to stay together. Right. Well, I'm saying the podcast, but like we're going to have a lot of uh, yeah. two. A lot of, yeah, it'll, it'll be a lot of twos. A lot so of twos, yeah. might, not might be me and Lorenzo or me and Brady or Brady and Lorenzo. Look at that. 
You can. You can. The band's back. Brady just learned something. <laughs> I just literally <laughs> learned something. <laughs> I love it's it. been a perfect time, too, because I'm going to Alaska, so now I can group message everyone. Yeah, perfect. Well, we look forward to hearing from you. Golly, I can't wait. I'm going to get the unlimited plan just so we can message all the time. My what's what's going to be the message? BBD. <laughs> Big bull down? Yeah. Oh, my, my muscle <laughs> <laughs> And with that, we're out. Yeah, <laughs> see you.